places. And what we were expecting from the youth is to come together and take power away from the old politicians who have been running the country since all these it's years. But when we saw that uh, you as one of our favorite youth aspirants joining PDP, we were a little bit disappointed. So tell us your justification why you join PDP. I know you have already explained a little bit of it. Go ahead and tell us more clearly. Okay, so it's um, I was I needed to be honest with myself. Mm. If we wanted to, if we want to win this election, most of these new parties do not have the strength, the capacity, the grassroots presence, mm. the financial strength mm. to to give us the result that we want. Let's not lie to ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Um, most of my, my grandmother in the village is going to go to the ballots looking for looking looking for an umbrella or a broom where she can turn print. Some of these new political parties, I saw their logo. Our entrance into the PDP was clearly because we wanted a political party that had the the, the grassroots presence. So that when we enter, I, I, I've said it many times, some people say, oh, PDP is bad. I say, no, it's the people within the party that are bad. It's always the people in the house. Every house you see, give it to me, I will fix it and you will like it. So we needed to go there. When I declared to run under the PDP, I'm sorry, but I, I was hoping that many people will see and understand the vision. If we had gone there in our numbers, Ahmed Buhari has declared under the PDP. And the next morning, 10 million young people joined him there. Mm. The PDP would give space for us. Okay. Yeah. There was no way in my mind. Yeah, that is true, though. That is true. That's all, fact. Yeah. All the, all the people that the PDP has presented, and I'm not joking right now, all the people that the PDP has presented are people that mm. cannot beat Muhammad Buhari in the 2019 elections. Okay. But imagine if the PDP had celebrated a young person. Say yes. Into their party, mm, mm, mm. all young people in the country will go to that party, support that young person, and see that he wins. Yes, I understand. This was, this was the dream, but like many of us, we oh. are quick to just look at things on the surface level. Oh my God, he went to PDP. We can't stand it. I saw on your platform that you presented my declaration to run under the PDP. I saw videos that was that was a huge number of people coming from all over the country supporting what they believed in what i needed people like yourself to have understood before making those assertions was to ask why does this guy want to go there i've listened to him it's different from them not to you know the thing with us you just said the pdp is this and the pdp is that I went into the PDP and the people I met in the PDP were not people that responded to what we were trying to do positively. They just believed that one, we were too young and our views and our processes were not the same with theirs. But imagine if it was not just me. Let's just say we were many of us there. Mm -hmm. But when I did yes. that, I expected people like yourself and many millions of other Nigerians to say, well, if this is what he wants to do, we are with him. We are with him. We're not with the party. We're with him. And so when we come in there, these guys will give us our space. Who thinks that it will just happen like magic? So all of you, when I went in there, most of you say, oh, I'm not going to work with him anymore. I'm not going to be part of with him anymore. But what you did at that time was you, we went back and we, we are spreading ourselves into other parties, knowing that these parties cannot deliver. We were lying to ourselves that, oh, yes, we have parties. Let's join these parties. But they cannot deliver. So after spending about after spending a few months in the PDP, I tried to make the leadership of the PDP understand that the easiest way to get Muhammad Buhari out of office mm. is to present a youth aspirant, a youth yes. candidate, a youth candidate on a big platform. With the support of the platform, we would crush any opponent. But the PDP did not believe in us for many reasons. One, they think our ideology cannot work in Nigeria. Two, yes, they believe that we don't have the kind of money that they would want to play around with. Okay. And I, for one, will not give money to any political party because I want to run under them. 
So at that point, we made a decision to pull out from the PDP and run with the Sustainable National Party. Now oh, I am. Okay. You defected from PDP, right? Oh yes, oh yes, I did last month. Okay. And the decision was born out of our desire to ensure that the dream is not killed. You decided to join PDP a few months ago. After how many months you defected? Tell us your justification, your reasons. Clearly, we were in the PDP and we could see very clearly that they were not determined to welcome a youth aspirant. The party did not give room for a youth aspirant for many reasons. We had a reason why we were there. And it was because it doesn't make any sense for a new aspirant to go on a new political party. It will not sell. We needed at least a youth aspirant going on an old political party and it will go to the grassroots. If the PDP supports Ahmed Buhari, every single person in this country will know about it by morning. And this is exactly what we were looking for. Now, okay. after spending a few months there, we clearly yeah. saw that the party was not ready to change its ways. And the reason why we went into the party in the first place was because the party had openly told Nigerians that they were ready to change their ways, bring young people into the party, support new ideology. You know, they apologized for 16 years of misrule, mismanagement. But when we went into the party, we realized that they were not really repentant. And so they were still hell bent on, oh, aspirants have got to bring money before you do this, bring money before you see this. And at that point, we said, oh, these guys are still the same. We need okay. a party that will be really ready to give us the kind of Nigeria that we want. And we okay. chose to run with the Sustainable National Party. I'm right. I'm almost right with whatever I said about you. You know, okay, uh, your experience in PDP uh, shows that... Uh, PDP, the Kaba political parties are not ready to entertain the youth. What method do you think will be effective to take power away from the Kaba right now? It's not. Um, we keep thinking of taking power to taking power away from the Kaba. Look, it's a process. We would have to understand that unless we can form a strong movement, we cannot take power from the Kaba. And I keep asking people, who is the Kaba? Anybody can be cabal. Okay. If you, you are with the media industry, you are a media personality. Mm. If all the media personalities come together in Nigeria mm. and agree to support one aspirant, all the media personalities come to support one aspirant and they only talk about that one aspirant every day on their news. And because of that, that aspirants enter the mentality of the people and the people start accepting that aspirants. Mm. Who is the cabal now? The media personalities, because they have come together to do one thing together and they install a president and they make him submissive to them. They tell him what they want in the media industry and he does it. No, now think about it. Now no. think about this. Sorry, sorry, sorry to sorry to interrupt. Think about this. You have, you have about 60 million people that will vote in the next elections. Let's imagine that all these people decide we want to support Ahmed Buhari with just 1,000 Naira. We'll be able to raise about 60 billion Naira. We can run any kind of campaign we want to run in Nigeria. Now, if Ahmed Bari succeeds and win the election, mm. who must have installed him? The people. Who is the cabal? The people. But each time a politician puts his hands in his pockets to pay for a campaign process, I am telling you, when he gets into office, the people that gave him the money to pay for that campaign process will collect that money back at an interest rate that only them can determine and at a return of investment time that only they can determine. So it is important for us to understand that, look, like our people keep saying, good soup, now money killer. You have to pay for it. Yeah. You want good, I, you want good governance? You pay for it. You want a I good know. system? You pay for it. And when you pay for it, when these people get into office, they will not say, come and take back your 1,000 naira. No. They will now give you the dividends of democracy that they promised you. Because at that time, they are indebted to the people. So the cabal happens to be the people that are ready to invest in the campaign processes. 
And the fact that we are shying away from investing and putting ourselves in there, it has made us far away from governance. This is what you know, to the mentality of the people. Okay. Do you mean that journalists can also shape this next election? Very well so. Journalists can, entertainers can, the medical industry can. Do you know what it means if the medical industry says they're not going to support, they're not going to work if, if, if this government continues? They can cripple the government. The labor union can cripple the government. We okay. need to be serious. The market women can break the the market women can install a president. Okay. I am telling you, for instance, what you are saying now is against uh, the tradition of journalists. Because uh, according to what I read about journalism, you have uh, the right to interview all the youth aspirants. If you have to support one, you are deviating from the tradition of a journalist. You understand? That's why we, we entertain why everybody. Going? I saw you with uh, other youth aspirants uh, during the time they formed a form of a, a coalition pact. Are you a member of the pact? Yes, I was a member of the pact. Okay. I got into the pact because clearly I was determined to see how we can have a unification, especially from the youth perspective. But along the line, I pulled out. And my reasons for pulling out was because the process was not going to give us the kind of result that we were looking for. Okay. And that is why I pulled out. And um, for me, I'm excited that um, that one thing that everybody thought was going to work, um, mm -hmm. we've tried it, and unfortunately, it didn't quite give us the kind of... Because I was expecting that whoever emerges from the pact would create an excitement across the country, but it didn't quite create that excitement as we were hoping which means that still um, something we're not doing right. And like I've told many people, this hasn't been done before. I've told many people, Ahmed, they keep saying, Ahmed, what do we do next? And I said, look, we all have to think about it together because um, there's no blueprint, there's no framework, there's, no, um, there's nothing that has ever been done like this in Nigeria before. So we are the ones that would have to create it. We are the ones that would have to say, we have designed, we have fashioned a process, a method, a way that can give us this country. So we are on the process. Okay. I would expect, I would expect that for the pact to have been effective, we probably would have waited to go through our primaries. When you emerge from your primary as a candidate and you can still feel that you don't have the capacity to win on a general scale, then we find ourselves mm -hmm. on the round table and deciding. Mm -hmm. Because in that meetings, those meetings that we had, there were some people that I saw there that were running for office of the president that I've never heard of before and seen before. But they were also there entitled to voting. You can, you can see that some of these things do not carry enough weight. And that is why the people do not follow us to, oh, to believe okay. that we have the solutions. Now, what political party did you defect to? I am with the Sustainable National Party, the SNP. It's a new political party. And when they approached me and presented their the party to me, I, um, I had to study the party to see if... Um, it had things that would excite me as a young person and um, allow us to, you know, to, to present ourselves in a way that would be effective moving forward as a people. And the Sustainable National Party has been very supportive, it's been very helpful. It's a young party. I think it's a party where we can really present our ideas and get the support of the party structure to see those ideas coming into fruition. fruition. And um, that is why I'm excited about being with the SNP. Though it's a small party, but I think it's now time for us to show and display our strength by giving it the support that is required. Are you the only aspirant in that political party right now? No, no, no. There, there are other aspirants. We're going to be having the primaries tomorrow in Abuja. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, um, tomorrow? Yes. Primaries will be tomorrow in Abuja, and um, I'm hoping that um, I emerge. Mm. Oh, okay. Sustainable National Party. Okay. SNP, Sustainable National Party. We participated in the Ocean State elections, and um, out of the 48 parties that participated, we came eight. Oh, uh, that's for us, that, that's encouraging. 
it's a process like i said and from the time i made the declaration under the party we've had a lot of people from this especially from the southeast part, southeastern part of the country declaring their interest to want to run for various offices so i think um if we're able to put our acts together we probably will put a shocker in 2019 is there any form of a, a debate scheduled for the aspirants in Nigeria right now? Yeah, yes, of course, there will be debates. But already we've got word from the current ruling party, the APC, that the president will not um, be present for the debate. He will send his vice to represent him. Um, whoever is going to send will be ready to, to debate that person and let them let Nigerians know that we have other people that have better ideologies and um, thought processes. And like I said to you earlier, you said um, we don't have the experience. And I tell you, mm. these people that have all the experience, we've not seen that experience give us results. So we probably we should be looking somewhere else for the kind of results that we want as a people. When is the debate? They haven't fixed the dates. There's still time. I'm sure debates will start coming sometime in November, December, to, to know exactly who the people are going to support. I want to tell everybody that is, um, you know, mm watching us now and we'll watch this later that um one of the reasons why i'm running for this office is because i believe i'm too relevant for my generation to hear that i existed without making an impact and for me it's not a quest for power but a, but a, a plea to to serve and we have joined the sustainable national party for those people who were not happy that we joined the pdp i hope you're still listening come join us in the snp now now that we move to the SNP and stop standing on the sidelines and complain and just analyze, try and be part of the process. Uh, until then, I want us to realize that there is no cabal. We can become the cabal if we are serious. Uh, it's politics. It's not an emotional game. It's not um, driven by passion. It's driven by passion sometimes, but it's not emotional. It should not be sentimental. We should just really, really understand that it's politics. So we have to play that way. So I'm appealing to everybody to support this and understand that kind of country that we're looking for can happen only if we are participatory. But if we're going to stand on the sidelines, nothing will happen. There is um, a message, a, a very important uh, uh, question from the president of Nigerian Union in Italy. He said the best thing to do for now or before the 2019 elections is to push for laws that can guarantee a free and fair election and to sponsor bills that can activate the rule of law in Nigeria. The story of Get Your PVC is a mirage, and it cannot help to take over power from the cabals. He has a very good point. He has a very good point. But when you talk about uh, push for law... Excuse me. This, this, this question is coming from uh, the president of Nigerian Union in Italy. So he's a very important person. That's, that's fantastic. And I'm glad that he's paying attention to this. But then he has talked about the laws. And, you know, we keep talking about these things that they can happen very easily. You know, if I deviate a little bit, I'm going to talk about the Biafra situation. And as much as there's so much agitations from that part of the country, you know, I keep asking all my friends and brothers and sisters in, in that part of the country. I've never heard any lawmaker, either in the lower house or in the upper house, in the Senate or in the reps or the governors, ask for anything to be done for their people. So, in other words, what I'm trying to hit at is the fact that we want this loss to happen. We want to push these things. But unfortunately for us, we are forgetting that the same people that we are hoping to save us are already part of the system and they're not concerned. So it is now our duty when we identify these kind of things to say, you know what? We are going to vote out these people. It's not just about the presidency. It's mostly about the lawmakers. There are three arms of government. There is the executive arm of government, there is the legislative arm of government, and there is the judicial arm of government. We need to look at a way or find a way to penetrate all of this and get it cleansed up. That is our duty. Somebody left a comment for you. This is a good one today. We'd like to work with you and other aspirants to form a united front. Thank you, Ignatius. Okay, another one is coming. I... I, I like your line of business. How will your work impact the growth of the Nigerian nation? Okay, thanks, Ignatius. Um, thank you for your comments and everything. We, 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 I'm sure you've listened. Your, con your, your question, unfortunately, isn't quite um, clear and direct. If you can make it clearer, we would be willing to respond as best as we can. 
that is all for today thank you for joining me uh today on this live uh video on facebook thank you so much and tomorrow is your party primary right yes so after the primary i hope you will be nominated you are optimistic that you will be uh, nominated tomorrow we're, we're working towards it and hopefully when we do a march um mm -hmm. we would um we would like to talk to you as well to let you know where we're headed and how how the party would like you to support it especially from your space we wish you the best good luck for all you have been doing we are proud of you after the primary i would also like to bring you to this show again so that you will discuss more in detail about your manifesto uh your proposal for nigeria it'll be really nice talking to you all thank you